A SWAT team raided the home of a family in Georgia, and uh, since they had a difficult time opening the door, they decided that they would throw a stun grenade through the door, and it landed into a baby's crib and basically exploded, leading to severe burns for this 19-month-old. Um, now, the reason why cops were, or the SWAT team, went to that home is because they had previously gone to the home in order to purchase drugs. There was an undercover officer purchasing drugs, and apparently a man living in that house had sold him methamphetamine. So they went, went away, got a no-knock warrant, which obviously means that they can enter the home without knocking, and uh, they came back and did what they did with the stun grenade, and uh, the 19-month-old was severely burned, and now he is actually in a medically induced coma. Uh, the mother is absolutely devastated because she doesn't even live there. In fact, uh, it's her sister-in-law's home. They say that they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and they had no idea that this was going to happen, obviously. But if we have uh, some of the pictures, I'll show you how severe the burns are. It's very difficult to look at, so I'm just warning you that it is graphic. Here's the little boy, and those oh. are the burns that he suffered because of this ridiculous raid. So apparently it landed in his playpen and exploded on his pillow right in his face. There's his playpen. You can see that it burned a hole through it. Um, his mother says he is in a medically induced coma and he is paralyzed. I hope he's not going to remember this. I know his sisters, his mommy, and his daddy will never forget this. And she also says there's nothing we can do to change the situation. My husband and I would gladly both give up our lives to see him not like this. He's such a happy little boy and to see him like this laying there, not moving, it's heartbreaking. We just want to hold him, and we can't. You know, I, I know it's easy for us to jump all over the cops in these stories, and we do these stories constantly um, because there's so much of it, but it just never ends. Mm -hmm. So the little piece of me that says, well, they're going into a house with crystal meth, meth and there could be guns there and all that stuff, it's overridden by seeing pictures like that and that there had to have been another way yeah. to deal with this. So the man of the household was arrested and he was the one who was uh, selling the drugs. When the cops raided the home, uh, they only found residue of meth, but they didn't find more meth. Um, and you know, the reason why they were able to obtain a no-knock warrant is because he had been charged with a weapons charge previously. So they were concerned that he would have weapons. But you know, I just... Look. It, it goes back to the bigger issue, and I feel like I've said it so many times on the show, it almost sounds cliche, but we have to end this war on drugs. It yeah. doesn't make sense. There are too many, there's too much in terms of collateral damage. You know, when you're dealing with these raids, when you're dealing with law enforcement using excessive force in order to find drugs, it just doesn't make any sense. If you genuinely care about the well-being of these people and you don't want people using things like meth, what you do is you regulate it, you legalize it, and you fund programs to help rehabilitate people. This doesn't make sense. This is not a, a, a strategy that's working. Yeah, and you look, I get the part about why you get the no-knock thing, and I get the part that the guy previously had a gun there, yeah. so I understand, and I want to have sympathy for the cops. I don't like it when we always jump all over the cops in every instance. Um, but this is, this. Why, why do we do these stories every week? Not why do we do them, why do they keep popping up? It's because of the drug war that we have, right. and it's because we have a police force that's being unregulated, basically. Yeah. And uh, so we're, there's two things happening here at once in a story like this. Doing a violent raid for something involving drugs just doesn't make sense to me. If, if you have some suspicion that there's someone who is doing sex trafficking or someone who is, you know, filming child pornography, I mean, things that actually genuinely harm people, then yeah, I, I, I'm in favor of raids. But in this case, it's someone who's selling methamphetamine. And I get it, you know, you don't want drug traffickers, but again, you wouldn't have illegal drug traffickers if you legalize marijuana, um, legalize drugs to begin with. Right. And of course, in this case, it's meth. Um, but yeah, you would take the power away from those traffickers because people would buy them legally. You regulate it, you educate people, and they'll stop doing it. That's so the only you, way. What do you think the cops should have done in this situation? Should it have been that they would have surrounded the house and then made an announcement on a loudspeaker and been like, you know, you have... 10 minutes to come out. I mean, something like that yeah. seems more rational. Again, I'm not in law enforcement, so I, I don't, don't know I, the exact legality of everything. And, and they, I guess they did some due diligence by getting the, the no-knock thing. Um, but it, does that something like that make more sense? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that there should be a raid like this when it involves drugs. It, yeah. it, it, certainly no a no-knock warrant. I, I, I can understand a warrant. You want to search the home. You believe that there might be drugs. But again, like this is a, a waste of resources. I, I would much rather them focus on issues 
issues where people are really being harmed instead of focusing on an issue like this, which involves drugs. And again, I'm not saying meth is great. Meth is obviously <laughs> terrible. But the way you handle it is by helping to rehabilitate people, not go in and throw stun grenades into someone's home. By the way, at 3 in the morning. So everyone's sleeping. Right. It's amazing. But I don't one, know. One other thing. I would love to see the numbers on the violence that occurs after the no-knock warrant. Mm -hmm. Because think about it. If you have a warrant, even if the person has a gun there and you knock just to issue the warrant, the chances that they're just going to suddenly shoot you are probably pretty low. With the no-knock warrant, where you can immediately burst right in, right. You're, you're already presenting that there is going to be a threat of violence because someone has broken into your home. And also, think about this for a second, right? We have several states in the country right now that have stand-your-ground laws or the Castle yep. Doctrine. So so if you are sleeping, it's 3 in the morning, right. and you hear someone trying to bang your door open, no knock, just bang your door open, what are you going to do under today's climate? You're going to grab your gun. You're going to shoot. You're going to feel like there is an imminent threat there. So we have all of these conflicting policies in place, and people are getting hurt. And in this case, there is a baby who has severe injuries. In many cases, there are dogs that get shot and killed. In other cases, there are family members that don't just suffer injuries. They get shot and killed, and they're completely innocent. So this kind of stuff is unacceptable. It's not the right way to handle drugs. It's not the right way to deal with the war on drugs. We have to completely rethink and reform the way we handle this situation.